When you try to search the word dissipation factor, you will see it as synonym with it the power factor. Okay, so in this demonstration, we want to we want to show that does actually the power factor and the dissipation factor are the same thing or they are different. So basically, we'll have uh, two insulators, defective one and a healthy one, and we already did the dissipation factor measurement and the power factor measurement. And we want to see that if they are equal or if they are, this is the dissipation factor for the healthy insulator, which is in the 4% range. And this is the dissipation factor for the unhealthy insulator, which is in the 100 range. As we did it before in the video, I will keep the link for measurement of the dissipation factor in the description. Now, let's try to see the power factor for both insulators. So when you see the power factor here, for the healthy one, it's on top of the distribution factor. So they have almost the same value. But when you look here, for the unhealthy insulators, you can see that they are far away from each other. So if you want to see the actual value, this is the distribution factor 4.4, and it is 4.39 for the power factor. As you can see, they are very, very close to each other. Now, when you look here, for the unhealthy or the defective insulator, the dissipation factor is 254%, but the power factor is 93%. The question is why the power factor dissipation factor are very close when the insulator is healthy, far away from each other when the insulator is not healthy. Please join me in this short explanation. Hi everyone, and uh, uh, let, let us answer this question. Why, when the insulator is not defective, the dissipation factor and the power factor, they are very close to each other. And when it is, it is defective, they are far away from each other. And this would lead us to answer the big question, is the dissipation factor and the power factor the same thing or they are two different things? So just remind us about the results. For the healthy insulators, the dissipation factor was 4.4 four percent the power factor four point three nine seven percent very close to each other however for the defective one the dissipation factor was 254 percent of course much much higher than this one and this has been covered in the uh, previous uh, video but the power factor is 93 percent so why is this discrepancy so when you go and try to understand what is the dissipation factor and what is the power factor. So if we see this triangle, which is the voltage uh, versus the currents, we have here the IC, the capacitive current, which is 90 degree with the voltage. We have IR, which is the resistive uh, current. And we have I, which is the uh, total current. The dissipation factor is the ratio between the resistive current and the capacitive current. The power factor, on the other hand, it is the resistive current divided by the total current. So the resistive current is the measure of the defect in the insulator or the aging of the insulator. So the, if the insulator is healthy, not defective, IR becomes very, 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 very small. And if IR becomes very, very small, then your I, uh, IC is almost equal to I. And these two formulas become exactly the same. However, when you have a defective insulator, IR becomes significant. And IC doesn't equal or close anymore to I. So these two ratios become totally different. Let's use the same numerical value we have. So for the healthy insulator, the dissipation factor, the tan delta, was equal to 4.4% or 0.0440129. And from this, your delta, take tan inverse of this, is equal to 2.52 degree. That is your delta, which is this angle. Theta, on the other hand, is 90 minus the delta, and here it will be equal to around 84.48 approximately. So cosine theta 
will equal to 0 0.0439 and so on and so forth. So this is why we have similar values because cosine theta is becomes close to 90 and the delta is close to zero. On the other hand, when we have defective insulator, your tan delta is equal to 254% or 2.54115. And this means that your delta will be equal to 20, uh, 68.519. And from this, you can say that your theta, which is 90 minus delta, which is equal to around 21.48, then your cosine theta, which is cosine of this angle, will equal to 0 0.93005. So almost unity power factor, almost pure resistive load. So that is why when we use the word dissipation factor and power factor as synonyms, we meant only for healthy insulators. Once the insulator becomes unhealthy, defective, then they are two different, two different things.